Welcome to the Man Cade. Well, actually, I'm outside of the Man Cade today because it's summertime and you should, you know, leave the basement every once in a while. But that doesn't mean you have to stop playing your arcade games. So today we're going to look at some of the great arcade games you can take on the road with you in summer vacation or just if you're sitting outside and you just want to break from reality. Although, why would you want to break from this? I don't know. So sit back and relax. And remember to take a moment to like, subscribe, share, comment, turn your notifications on. And remember, if you're not outside retro gaming, what are you doing? I have been on quite the pong jag lately, and so being able to play a decently challenging version on my iPhone is pretty cool. Super Ping Pong is not from Atari, it is a knockoff, but it will scratch your pong itch and you might want to see a doctor if that persists. While it offers four games, they're basically all Pong with different sound effects, although one game offers various power-ups like Speedball, Frozen Paddle, it slows you down. My only two complaints are number one, using your finger to move the paddle up and down can get in the way of viewing the paddle, and number two, the game difficulty says easy, but it is nothing of the sort. Still, all in all, pretty fun for a game that's been around for almost 50 years. If you've got a hankering for some Arkanoid arcade action on the go for your iOS or Android phone, look no further than Atari's Breakout Boost. Since Atari invented the breaking bricks with a ball and paddle genre back in 76 with Arcade Breakout, and then in 78 with Super Breakout, this particular version gets the nod over the many Me Too games available. The finger style controls are awesome and you can select from a multitude of ball speeds. After the 10 free levels are gone, you can always pay for a variety of add-on levels and extras and at most they're about $2.79, at least Canadian. Definitely try this one out. In 1978, Space Invaders attacked Earth and nothing was ever the same again. The original OG Space Invaders from Taito is available for $4.99 on iOS and Android. And if Boston Aliens makes you feel good, the handheld versions are just as frustrating as the real thing. Yeah, the controls are a tad sluggish, but so is the original, so I can't find much fault here. You've given three types of control schemes and four displays are offered. There's the original black and white, the cellophane overlay, the color, and the ability to toggle the background. There is not a free version to try, so make sure you're in an invading mood before purchasing this one. Originally released into arcades back in 79, Asteroids made a huge impact on the video game industry and helped cement Atari's dominance during the golden age of gaming. And there might have been an actual Atari Asteroids available on iOS at some point, but that no longer appears to be the case. So enter Elsteroids, the next best thing. And while it's free, it's only 99 cents to get rid of the ads, and that's well worth it. Elsteroids looks, sounds, and plays pretty great. And there are numerous control schemes and display options to get you into that groove. Check that one out. Sometime before 1980, game designer Toru Awatana took a slice of pizza and was inspired to create one of the most popular video game icons of all time. Before and after 1980, I have taken many slices of pizza and was only inspired to eat more pizza. That teach the wrong, I guess. Pac-Man is one of the mainstays of any arcade, and you're damn right you should be playing it on your phone. This Android and iOS version is pretty perfect. Although to me, Pac moves a tad slow to be able to pull off the pattern, if you know what I mean. Uh, Billy Mitchell does, and I know he's watching. Suck it, Mitchell! This 40th anniversary Pac-Man mobile game from Bandai Namco is definitely a welcome addition to your phone. A few different control schemes guarantees anyone will be able to play this game. There are the classic mazes, new mazes, and as usual for mobile phones, challenges, tournaments, and rewards that I could absolutely not care less about. Useless clutter, in my opinion, but fun game. First, there were Space Invaders in 78, Galaxian followed in 79 and evolved the vertical shooter, and then in 1981, Namco Midway's Galaga took all of that and cranked it to Spinal Tap level 11. You're not cool if you're not a Galaga fan. It's video game perfection. The closest game you'll get to Galaga on mobile devices is Galax Defender, even though there is an official Galaga game called Galaga Wars. Nope. Fancy schmancy nonsense, trust me. While Galax and Galax Defender is not perfectly recreated, it's a damn fine game that will challenge any Galaga fan simply because the enemies will do things you're not expecting. I love it. Play it with bezels or not, virtual D-pad, or movable touchscreen controls. You're going to want this.
I'm disappointed this iOS Android version of Centipede is an arcade perp. Because, you know, it's a new fangled update of a classic. But I could live with that. What I cannot live with or condone in any way is the total cluster F of an interface that puts the onus on gambling to play. You can't seemingly play a one-player game without competing against someone else with either real cash or practice with tokens. W-T-F. If you absolutely must play Centipede and want to wade through a user interface that seems more interested in separating you from your time and money, then be my guest. The gameplay is fun, and it looks like a million bucks, but the heart and soul has been ripped out. It's the uncanny valley of video games. Pass! Frogger crossed the road in 81 and jumped right into the hearts of gamers everywhere. Edward Hopper isn't the Frogger you remember, it's really an updated version of the classic, and the closest you're going to get to playing Frogger on your device. I'm assuming the title Edward Hopper is an inside joke or homage or something, as he was a realist painter in the 20th century. You might know one of his famous works, Nighthawks. I'll show it to you now. bam -o! Anyway, this unoffensive ripoff of Frogger is pretty damn good and worth a play. Even the ads are unobtrusive enough to stand playing it, but if you cough up 99 cents or less, you'll flatten those ads and make them croak. Try this one. Cubert debuted in 82 and made cartoon swearing a hit with the arcade crowd. This iOS Android version of the classic Cubert updates the graphics but keeps the heart and soul completely intact. In fact, playing it on a phone with swiping controls makes it the best way to play Cubert aside from the arcade as it's incredibly accurate. The arcade version of Cubert implemented a four-way joystick on a 45 degree angle and not up and down which makes main versions pretty persnickety to play. Make it through 10 ridiculously easy levels to gain access to the arcade version, but be warned that even if you pay for the full game, you'll still have to sit through a slog of very long ads to get new characters like Wreck-It Ralph and other extras. But this game is awesome. Also appearing in 82 was Miss Pac-Man, who took the line, Anything you can do, I can do better from the musical Annie Get Your Gun, and shoved it down Pac-Man's little yellow throat. This is a pixel-perfect iOS and Android version of the arcade classic, and while I demoed the light version, just spent a couple of bucks and get the full version to bypass the ads. Man, ads suck. Swipe controls are great here, and there's even some history here for Pac-Man slash Miss Pac-Man fans. Buy this one. If you walked into an arcade in 83, whether you loved it, hated it, played it, or watched it in action, no doubt you were initially transfixed by Don Blue's Dragon's Lair, the first laser disc based game, the video game that played like a cartoon. Space Ace and Dragon's Lair 2 Time Warp followed afterwards, and this cartoon quick time trilogy can be yours to take on the road with you at any time. These games shine on mobile devices as the controls are easy to master, but the patterns can be hard to learn. But with on-screen hints, these games are easier than ever, especially than the arcade. Definitely recommended, especially if you're a fan. You should be rushing to download this updated 1984 arcade literal blockbuster. Tetris for mobile devices is as wonderful a fit as it was when it launched with the Game Boy in 89. It's got easy to use controls, eye-popping graphics, updated classic soundtrack, control settings for lefties, ghost blocks for best fits, and challenges that will provide entertainment for days, weeks, months, years, decades. For as much as I've played Tetris, I have never truly mastered it. It's almost like every time I play it, it's for the first time. And you know what, to be honest, that's a good thing, as it's always fresh. This is a must have on your device. Taito's 1986 bubble blowing bonanza Bubble Bobble is not one of my favorites by any stretch, but this iOS Android version is a carbon copy of the arcade experience, which means if you are a fan, then it's obvious you need to get this game yesterday. Controls are a tad wonky, especially when trying to turn to face the other direction, but I think the novelty of playing this on your phone, if you love the game, will circumvent any overall frustrations. Ah, uh, yeah, Sega. They know what's what. Bringing their Sega Genesis classics such as Sonic the Hedgehog, Revenge of Shinobi, and the Streets of Rage franchise to mobile devices everywhere. What a great idea. Out of the three games, though, only Revenge of Shinobi falters slightly due to the finesse required to traverse uh, some of those trickier platform challenges in the game. However, the infinite shuriken cheat code still works. Check it out right here. 
Sonic and Streets of Rage, and Streets of Rage 2, shown here, are insanely fun to play again and quite the novelty being able to play them while waiting for your wife at the doctor's, or you're waiting for your wife at the mall, or even if you find yourself waiting for your wife at home. It's only a couple of bucks to remove the ads and definitely well worth it. These Sega games are all sold separately and you should definitely check them out. And last and very least is the Double Dragon Trilogy that you can find on iOS and Android. This is a do not buy. It looks like it might be great, but your thumbs and your fingers are in the way. You can't see the action properly. Do not buy. You've been warned. So we'll let that play out while I play you a couple of bloopers of me trying to make this thing happen. And remember to please take a moment to like, subscribe, comment, share, turn your notifications on. And remember, if you're not retro gaming, what are you doing? I'll see you next time. If you're hankering for some Arkanoid arcade action on your iOS or Android phone, look no further than Atari's Breakout Boost, which uh, hankers back. Hankers, everything's hankering. If you're hankering from some Arkanoid arcade action on your iOS or Android phone, look no further than Atari's Breakout Boost. Hankering back. Hankering. <laughs> He's hankering. <laughs> If you're hankering from some arcanoid and arcanoid noid 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 If you are hankering from some arc <laughs> If you're hearkening Oh fuck, are you kidding me? If you're hearkening fucking Jesus Christ I did it again If you're hankering from some arcanade <laughs> I gotta stop <laughs>